season to be spooky. Fa la 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 la. Deck the halls with skeleton booties. Fa la 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 la. la. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Good evening from Geelong, Victoria. Yes, I am recording this in the evening, and I think I might actually start with the skeleton in the room of, yes, I'm actually recording another video. I know, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> so, basically, a couple of things. First of all, this is the Misery Makes Mayhem podcast, and I am the lovely Charlotte Misery. Um, you can find me on Instagram as, uh, shit, what's my handle again? <laughs> I don't even know my handle. That's how great I am. I am on Instagram as Charlotte Misery. I am on Ravelry, I do believe also as Charlotte Misery. Let's go have a look at my profile. Yep, Charlotte Misery. Um, and that's pretty much all you really need to know about that if you found me on YouTube. I used to actually have a Etsy store which I closed down because Etsy is just evil and I'm not entirely sure if I want to bring it back in which I was selling hand dyed yarns and hand dyed fibers for spinning. Um, that might come back in another form if people actually want it and stuff like that in the future but I'm still trying to build a following and stuff. Might not happen very quickly. Um, it is the beginning of October as I am filming this on the 5th of October. And to be perfectly honest, a few things that I really feel like I need to state right now include the fact that I have still got a lot to go with de-stashing. Uh, getting my stash just down to a more manageable level. I have not been purchasing, I can't say I haven't been purchasing yarn. I've made two purchases of yarn since I started my challenge of using my stash. Um, the first one is actually for the upcoming Stephen West MCAL uh, for Twists and Turns, the 2022 Stephen West MCAL, which I am doing using Four skeins that I dyed myself, uh, they are from Knit Picks and they are the Bear Alpaca base that I don't even know if they still do, but Alpaca Sock I think it was. Um, anyway, I think it's Alpaca and Nylon. Uh, very nice. It I love the feeling of it. Um, this was the first colour. Um, I was calling this one... Uh, Pinot Noir, and this is the second colour which I was calling Dust Storm, um, because it's grey and peach and it just reminded me of a dust storm, especially like a sunset when it's like dusty sky kind of thing. Anyway, I uh, bought another colour to go with it, um, which was the Ching Fibre High BFL Twist Canyon. Uh, I got this from Stephen and Penelope when I bought the little kit, the DIY kit for them. So that also included, in case you don't know and don't follow Stephen West, a gauge for uh, your needles. So a needle gauge. A... Um, A sticker and where is it? a little tag to put on the shawl when it's finished. Um, I do intend to actually put the tag on the shawl when it's finished. So this one's actually also in the list says that it requires a um, a cable needle and I actually wanted to take this time to talk to you about a little cable uh, a little thing that I decided that I'd do instead of actually buying a plastic cable needle. And I uh, I don't know why I wanted to do it. I think it's just because it's a little bit uh, out of the box, I guess. Um, but I bought some, uh, some porcupine quills. And uh, they're the right thickness to actually use as a cute little... Um, 
cable needle. So I'm going to be testing that out on this particular shawl and hopefully it works out as well as I planned it to. Uh, for this I also got myself a new set of Knit Pro Zing 3.5mm uh, needles. I still haven't taken them out of the packet. Um, they're 100 centimeters, so a whole meter in length, which hopefully is big enough. Stephen West does like to make giant shawls. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this, and I cannot wait for it to start. It starts on the 6th, um, but that's Netherlands time and in Australia. That's probably I might be able to start on it in the evening tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. I might spend all of tomorrow actually winding these skeins into balls. Uh, by the way, speaking of which, I don't actually use a cake winder for that, or a ball winder. I, um, well, technically it is a ball winder, but it's the uh, low-tech primitive version. <laughs> Where is it? My Nostapin. Um, if anybody actually wants to see a Nostapin being used, I can actually do a short of that. Um, just leave a comment and get back to me if you're actually interested in figuring out how you wind a ball on an Ostpin, if you don't already know. So just while I was recording, I got a phone call from my fiance. He'd just gotten off of work. So uh, back to it. Um, story time. Recently, we actually discovered that we had a pretty nasty infestation of clothes moths. So in the past couple of days, I have gone and thrown out a lot of my yarn, which really disappoints me because some of it actually was some of my hands one. Um, and some of a lot of it was the primitive breeds that I'd sp uh, that I'd that I had spun on my uh, on my spindles. Um, but it's been a while. <laughs> they've just kind of been sitting there because I have been very uh. I haven't been very, um, I've been a little bit scared to actually knit with them. And I'm trying to actually get over that phobia because there's no point in spinning if you're not going to actually use it, right? So I'm getting over that phobia. I'm trying to work with yarns that I'm, uh, fibers that I'm actually going to be willing to spin with, or at least, uh, work with, knit with, uh, weave with, things like that. Um, and as such... I've also given myself an added challenge to add to what I was doing when I actually finish my uh, challenge of getting rid, uh, using all of what's left now of my uh, of my wool. Um, a lot of that actually, like I said, a lot of it got thrown out, but all of my DK weight yarn was, uh, there was an infestation in there and I took out all of the stuff that had been moth-eaten and I put all of the rest of it instantly into a hot bath with some wool soak and I just left it overnight to soak and then hung it up in the sunlight the next day um, before bringing it in and just leaving it on a clothes era until it had fully dried so that I felt confident that it would have killed everything. I have since bought a I bought four pheromone traps and a bunch of cedar rings I've also got a huge bouquet of lavender that I plan on removing all of the lavender flowers from and putting in pouches to put into my baskets as well um, the reason for this is because both cedar and lavender are very good for deterring clothes moths and the more I can disperse them throughout the wool the better it's going to be in my opinion I could be incredibly wrong with this and hopefully I have dealt with this so far but I don't want it to come back now um, that was one of the big things that I really wanted to talk about because clothes moths are terrifying and this is also one of the big reasons why I was very much willing to use my um, use my chance at just not buying anything when my fiance actually mentioned it to use up my stash and move on because 
the more I leave just lying around, the more likely I am to actually end up attracting clothes moths. So if I can actually use what I've got instead of buying it, it's not going to allow for that to happen again. And then I can move on to having my predominantly hand spun um, stash with um, okay, so my idea for this is moving on after I've done that is I want to have hand spun as the first option. Second option being I have bought yarn bare and hand dyed it myself. And the third option is to go to an indie dyer and buy their hand dyed yarn. I do not want to get mill dyed yarns anymore. And there are a few reasons for that, but mostly, mostly it comes down to my own tastes. I don't want to, I don't want to shit on anybody saying that, you know, buying commercially dyed yarns as far as like, you know, not indie dyer and all that kind of stuff is bad because it's not. There are some very big indie dyers out there looking at La Bianime, looking at, um, oh, there's just a lot of them. Okay. Ching Fibers even is a fairly big brand um in australia we have oh, i can't think magpie fibers is actually a big one i don't think they're australian though anyway moving on from that oh, we've got black waddle yarns that's right um oh my brain is just not working with anything at the moment have i mentioned daylight savings started recently i'm not good with daylight savings it feels like i've gotten jet lag without actually you know flying anywhere not fun at all okay so I want to move on to what I've actually been knitting because I just realized I've been rambling and I haven't told you anything that I've knit lately. I started doing Stephen West's Shawl Smorgasbord and I am partway through a row and I hope I don't lose the needles but I am up to which part was I up to? The mesh stripes. I'm almost done with section 19 of the mesh stripes. Oops. I mean, it's getting big. It's a big boy. Very big boy. Um, this is all using just yarns that I had um, just in my stash. Some of them are from previous projects and I'm just using them up. And some of them are fresh skeins that I figured would look good in it so whatever um so that's all that's all a big thing and i hope that it's going to be real i think i think so far my favorite part of this whole thing and i just realized i am showing you the back of it <laughs> terrible aren't i there we go that's better my favorite part of it i think would be the um that basket weave in the turquoise cannot explain to you why but it is my favorite part i'm not a big bright color person but that pop is just so pretty on this um i mean can you tell i'm not a bright color person i've got a skull up that that skull is there all year round it's not just a halloween thing okay um so there was that one um previous projects that i have not touched in a while have i've i've done a couple of pairs of socks a couple of pairs, pairs of socks which i've been calling the sensory socks and um basically they are standard vanilla socks with a three centimeters of three inches maybe sorry uh so for it. three inches of um two to three inches somewhere around there of one-to-one -one ribbing around the area where your arch is to provide a little bit more of a hugging around your foot which just adds to that little bit of sensory feeling i'm calling them sensory socks I'm neurodivergent. It just works for me. It feels like I'm stimming when I'm not really doing anything. Um, okay. Moving on from that. Uh, I will probably put in some picture of that if I can actually 
get around to it. Um, then we have, I don't think, I haven't done anything on this one in ages. I really should. I really want to get this finished. The um, current mood shawl. I really want to get this off the needles and get the needles back. I'm actually really proud of this one though. Um, and I cannot wait to actually finish it. But yeah, I need to weave in all the ends, obviously. It's just really moody and at the same time, it's just so dark academia. Um, not something that I really have that much of in my wardrobe. I, little, I tend to go a little bit more romantic goth than dark academia, but I'm kind of leaning towards that these days. That's probably something that I'm actually going to do a little bit of work on. Um, between the seg uh, between the sections of the new MCAL. So speaking of Stephen West shawls, I had been working on the woven chevrons shawl uh, years ago. I started this one. I've actually put it back on the needles and been working on it a little bit here and there as I go. But these were all just kind of yarns that were not really deliberate colorways that I dyed um, and they're all on the uh, I'm trying to remember what base it is but it's the Peruvian Highland wool four ply base from um, from Knit Picks. Uh, I'm obviously not going to be buying much Knit Picks anymore because of the fact that they don't really do bulk purchases for their bare yarns anymore unless you are an indie dyer and that may or may not um, actually include people in Australia. I'm not sure yet. I haven't looked deeply into it. It was something that I did notice wasn't on their website when I was uh, looking at it last. As far as shipping was concerned for that but I haven't actually fully looked into it. Um, I do have a lot of other projects that I am actually doing and I really need to actually pay a bit more attention to them as things go on but it's it's something that I'm working on okay. Um, okay so I want to go a little bit into spinning because I've been doing a fair bit of spinning and uh, I have been working on trying to get through the um a school of sweet georgia spinning class which is spinning from scratch i think it is um i'm actually going to do some spinning on my turkish spindle as i talk about this um while i'm waiting for my ashford traveler to arrive it's been um push off for when it's actually going to be ready for shipping so many times so far. Um, I'm not going to say that there's any problem with Ashford there. It's not necessarily their fault. There's been a lot of shipping logistics problems that have been happening worldwide. There are parts they probably don't machine in their own workshops for various reasons and as such there's probably a lot going on there that has actually caused these delays. I am not angry at them for this, so that's something that I really want to make clear. But the fact of the matter is that I have been waiting for two months after making my order for them to actually have my Ashford Traveller double drive that hadn't been lacquered at all to be even ready to be um, shipped out. And because of that, I have been waiting slowly, going mad <laughs> with longing for this beautiful spinning wheel. I have had many thoughts about it, many thoughts of what I'm going to do for decorating it because I don't want to keep it just the bare colour. I actually want to stain it to match a little bit better with our aesthetic in this house, which is, I'm not sure if you can tell, 
but it's a little bit gothic, a little bit nice, deep, rich coloured woods, things like that. And um, yeah, basically because of that, we're just kind of winging it with that. But I'm waiting and I am getting a little bit impatient. The latest thing was saying that 9th of October it will be ready to ship. And I haven't heard since then. There's four days in which that could change. And last time it did actually change. The day before it was due to ship. And I was very sad. But it, it happens. It really does happen. And I'm not angry. I'm just a little bit sad. Because you wait for something like this. You save a lot of time. Uh, you save a lot of money to buy this beautiful spinning wheel. And then you wait and you wait and you wait and you keep being told it'll be here soon dot tm and then you wait and you wait and you wait and oh, we're gonna have to delay it a bit longer and you wait <laughs> and you wait and unfortunately that's where we are in the world since covid things are still trying to I guess you could say that the wheels of commerce are needing to be freshly oiled. <laughs> so that's basically my other story of woe at the moment. But I am actually really enjoying using a lot of my um, leftover yarns and things like that to just to just make things and see where it goes. Um, so hopefully next time next time i see you it'll be a little bit sooner <laughs> but um i can't guarantee it so yeah thanks for tuning in and uh thanks for listening to me, me uh, to me waffling um if you have stayed this long uh please do Tell me if you're going to be doing the Stephen West MCAL. Uh, tell me if you're into spinning. And if you're into spinning, what kind of tools do you use? Do you spindle spin? Do you use wheels? Do you do both? Um, what kind of crafts do you do? I'm really interested to know what kind of people get brought to this channel. Um, so, yeah, thanks for your time. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it'll be a lot sooner. Bye. So it's been a couple of days since I recorded the first bit of this video. Um, I started on the MCAL last night. No. No, sorry. I started on the MCAL, uh, yeah, last night. Uh, it's Saturday now. No. I've been working on it for a while. I started on it Thursday night. Yeah, that was it. Started on Thursday night. Um... <laughs> And I went and uh, did a fair bit of it. I would show it now, but um, actually I will. Spoiler alert for anyone who's actually doing it. But um, this is how far I've gotten. I know it's it doesn't look like what it's going to yet, but this is how far I've gotten. It's interesting. Um, I've come to the conclusion that with this particular pattern, even though it's a Stephen West, I would probably, if I knew what was going on with it just looking at it i would have thought oh my god that's so complicated how the hell am i supposed to do that i don't want to do it so i am actually really glad that that's the composition of this mcal this year because i will go into patterns and i will see something similar to this design and i will think okay i know how that works to a degree now i'm not going to be daunted by it as much so that's a good thing. I really like that. Also, I wanted to say that tonight uh, is the White Night in Geelong, and my son and I will be going to that. My fiancé is working at uh, Little Creatures in South Geelong, and um, he won't be able to come with us because of his shift today, but we're actually really looking forward to our son being able to have a bit of a um, outing doing that. He has autism 
and is triggered by lots of noise and sound and things like that, isn't great in crowds. So we're using these kinds of outings to give him a chance to normalize this kind of thing in his life with the option of he can always tell me I'm getting a little too heightened, I need a quiet place or I need to go home. So that's what we're going to do tonight. So we are in an area where they've got a bunch of little percussion instruments that James absolutely loves. Off he goes. <laughs> I might take a seat and do some spinning for a bit. Hasn't started yet, we're just in town and the road closures have caused some amazing amount of traffic everywhere. We came in by bus, so this will be an interesting night, I think. James has needed a couple of his stress coping mechanisms so far, but that's okay.